This is Twit. Okay, top of the news is that last Thursday, the I mean, we got a lot of top of the news, but we'll start with uh, the W3C finally decided after much debate to add the EME, which we've discussed in the past, the encrypted media extensions to the formal HTML5 spec. Not everybody was happy. Mm -mm. Uh, uh, (laughs) Or as Tech Dirt's Mike Masnick wrote the next day, Tim Berners-Lee sells out his creation. Yeah, I was so surprised that it was Tim who did this, really. Um, well, he's the director, and, oh, and, and he was uh, he was pretty outspoken. That just, well, he was, yeah, he was. But but my feel well. So there's 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 two aspects of this that uh, that uh, that that Mike focuses on, and I'm with him on one of the two. So so he wrote just to give you a sense for his position. He he wrote for years now. We've been we've discussed the various problems with the push led by the MPAA the Motion Picture Association, uh, but with some help from Netflix to officially add DRM Mm. to the HTML5 standard. Mm. Now, he writes, some will quibble even with that description as supporters of this proposal insist that it's not actually adding DRM, but rather this, quote, encrypted media extensions is merely just a system by which DRM might be implemented. Mike writes... Yeah, but, but why else would you do it? Uh, precisely. <laughs> but that's, as he says, but that's a bunch of semantic hogwash. Yeah, yeah. EME is bringing DRM directly into HTML, and kill, as Mike writes, and killing the dream of a truly open internet. Instead, he says, we get a functionally broken Internet, which I'll argue with. He says, despite widespread protests and concerns about this, the W3C boss and inventor of the web, Tim Berners-Lee, has signed off Mm. on the proposal. So disappointing. Yeah. Given the years of criticism over this, That sign-off has come with a long and detailed defense of the decision. So, um, you know, there are many issues underlying this decision, but there are two key ones uh, that I want to discuss here. First of all, whether EME is necessary at all and whether or not the W3C should have included a special protection for security researchers because that's what's missing. And and as we've heard me say on this podcast so often, we it, all of the evidence demonstrates the huge benefit to researchers being allowed to poke at security without fear of the DMCA being used to throttle that research. So, you know, Mike doesn't want this at all. That is doesn't want EME, encrypted media extensions. My feeling is it was probably inevitable. The alternatives were no access, no web-based access to protected copyright content or the requirement for a browser add-on plug-in to implement proprietary protections. And, you know, we're seeing... That's what we've been doing till now, by the way. That's how it's worked up to now. Right, and and we're we're trying to move away from the likes of Flash and Silverlight and and so forth, in you know, to more of a standards-based approach. Or the alternative, of course, would be a separate custom application published by each provider to deliver their own content. So, so to me, I mean, I, I know I don't use DRM. I've never copy protected anything that I've ever published, but. My, my sense is that, you know, either, well, I think it's clear that the, the copyright holders are never going to give in. That is, they're not going to just say, okay, fine, and make their content available without protection. So the alternative is to make it more cumbersome to have that content online. 
So, so essentially what this does is it creates a, it creates a standard container and a standard means of invoking what's called the, the CDM, which is the content decryption module. And so that remains a per provider blob, but but the EME, the encrypted media extensions, makes that a a uniform deliverable, which ends up prov- pr- providing a seamless experience to the web user who wants to access DRM protected content through their browser. So it, you know it it expands the portal. It it um, probably makes it stronger in the long term, but the the biggest problem from my standpoint is that they have punted on the on the DMCA provisions. That is, they've in fact exactly what they wrote was: we recommend organizations involved in DRM and EME implementations ensure proper security and privacy protection of their users. We also recommend that such organizations not use the anti-circumvention provisions of the Digital Millennium Copyright Act and similar laws around the world to prevent security and privacy research on the specification or on implementations. We invite them to adopt the proposed best practices for security guidelines or some variation intended to protect security and privacy researchers. But, I mean, this was one of the big issues surrounding this that they just, as I said, they just punted on. Um, they did not put that into the spec. So they're, so So it is certainly possible that somebody who who in the view of the MPAA or the RIAA, whomever was the content owner, decided they didn't like somebody doing research into the security of, of, their, of their, their CDM, their content decryption module, uh, could thwart that research. And that's really DMCA. where people feel that Tim sold out because he, yes. he could have supported this very small – exemption yes. and didn't even do that and th- yes. i think that's the sellout yes yeah and and there i agree i I'll, again i think that you know what 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 we're seeing broadly is this continual maturation of the internet and to me um you know we are using currently separate applications for example on ios devices you know hbo go and hbo now and and showtime's got its own module and you know every, everybody has their own and this moving forward to me this feels like a means of of integrating this and and making the experience more more seamless and the only way we're going to ever get that content in a web browser is if there's a e- either a plug-in or a standard. And so, you know, again, people don't have to view protected content through their browsers. No one's making them do it, but this at least provides a framework. So I, I can see that, but I really do wish that that they had said, okay, we're going to do it, but we're going to protect researchers also. And, and as you said, Leo, they, they chose not to.